This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Exactly. And with me, as always, is Leon. Hey, Leon. Hey. Mark. Hi. We have a mini celebration today. Yeah. Because it's a release date. Not of Mordic 3, but of the first alpha release of Mordic 3. Yeah, finally. So thanks to the team, uh, they finally made it. And uh, I'm very happy that we're now on a good way to the the actual release. Oh, yes. After the alpha comes the beta and, and then maybe another beta, we'll see. <laughs> and but, but it's a matter of weeks now and we'll talk about that later. Uh, also, we talked to... Ruth Cheesley, our community manager of the Mordic project, mm -hmm. in our main interview part. Before we go there, how are you doing today, Leon? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. Also, I'm pretty excited. There is an event going on the next week, which we will attend. It's the so-called T3 board. And um, it's an event from an, another open source project. Type of three, obviously. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> is a CMS, and it's a yearly event where we meet up in the Alps or somewhere where at least the snow, and then um, we go snowing, snowing. We go skiing <laughs> and snowboarding, of course, and having a lot of fun. And in the evenings, we do a lot of nerd stuff. And yeah, we'll be there next week. Yeah. Super yeah. excited! Yeah, I'm. I'm going as well. It's a really old event. It's the first ever meetup event of, of the type 3 community and I, I find it uh, super valuable still because it's really getting to know each other yeah. uh, over the course of a week it, it's it's uh, super super intimate so you get to know people really well make really good friends not just casual and get a lot of things done too and all that in, in Austria and uh, so we, we have two events this year in, in Austria and in um, Canada. Oh yeah, right. So next week is Austria. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too as well. Okie doke. Um, yeah, we have um, a bit of a larger topic um, that we picked for this episode and that's about one pain point that you had for a long time. Leon. Oh yeah, it, it's cron testing. I mean, the modic cron jobs, they're great. Like from the basic, how they work. But um, when I have to test something, just like basic email campaigns, and I have to wait for a cron job, which is like five minutes of delay. So every five minutes a cron job, a cron job runs. I have to wait for that. Like when the campaign should update or when the segment should update. And it's a pain in you know where. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, so there are like two ways now which got that fixed, more or less. Yeah, uh, it's worth mentioning that, that uh, Leon is, is on the user side of Mordic, is yeah. doing a lot of inbound campaigns, but is not active on the shell. Whenever you have shell access, you can, of, of course, trigger a a cron job or a certain console c command to, to update the segment that you like. But as a typical user, uh, that's not possible, and we should have our users in mind all the time. And I do believe it's a huge, huge pain. Yeah, the first one comes from Down Under, from our friend Virgil, and it's uh, published in the forum lately. It's called Release. Uh, it's called Mordic Cron, Cron Commands. It's basically a standalone PHP script that gives you access to console commands through a simple web UI. So there's a long list of, of uh, console commands, including Mordic commands, um, and you can click on them and they are executed and uh, you get the feedback. So that's helpful. It's, uh, it's trivially, uh, trivial to, to extend, uh, so you can add your own uh, console commands to the script. And um, it's also, of course, very powerful. Um, you may also say dangerous. You can do a lot of bad stuff too through this if you don't know what you're doing. So to me, this is really for those tech-savvy tech people that happen uh, not to have shell access or, or convenient shell access. So you can just replace the same through a web UI, click click on one of those, those 20 or 50 links and uh, be happy. Really good if you, if you need it, if you don't have shell access in a, an actual, in a serious production environment, I would 
tend to avoid that, at least no, uh, in, in, the, in the long run, because people are really not so happy if you have uh, standalone scripts that may be orphaned over time, may pose security risks, etc. So for development, of course, other than that, uh, it's, it's for, for the tech people, certainly. The other one is more for you, Leo. Leon, tell us about it. Yeah, the other one is for more not that tech-savvy people, as I call myself. <laughs> uh, it's written by Zadino Kasmani. Um, it's released under the name Crontester. It's a plugin for Modic, which um, gives you the option to update single campaigns and individual segments in the backend. Um, it's super easy to use. I've tested this myself. Um, you just go into a campaign and say update campaign. You have a new option in the drop down, which just states update campaign. You click it and the campaign gets updated. And um, it has its ups and downs. Like the downside is you have to update every single campaign, every single manually. Yeah, so if you, you need multiple, multiple in your test. Yeah, you can't yeah. just say update every segment and you can't say update all my campaigns you have mm. to do by hand yeah, i think for a typical test you don't need to update everything but it's convenient because multiple may be involved and, yep. and people are just lazy and so yep update them all i don't want to find out which are affected yeah but yeah i agree on the other side it's super easy to use yeah yeah i, I love it it uh it's uh not free it's a uh, 19 euros which yeah. is <laughs> close enough to free i think it's a complete bargain oh yes uh, the website is mtc xnd it's a uh, kasmani's uh, website the regular marketplace of his and uh, he has a lot of good stuff and go check it out i love it link in the show notes uh, as always you're right yeah uh next up um we ran across some some small mm, items <laughs> that are <laughs> annoying or, or are broken at the moment. So we have a couple of bug alerts and then the workarounds for it. The first is uh, the MaxMind database. Access has changed and, and therefore doesn't work as, uh, as as it did in the past with, with Mordic. The MaxMind database is a, a geolocation database yeah. which helps Mordic to understand which user comes from which country and which city. Um, in the past, Mordic just could download a file and, and use it. MaxMind has changed that. It's, it's still free to use, uh, but it, it requires a logon and a, a, an access key. So what you need to do is set that up, and then you can download the file. At the, at the moment, Mordic is not prepared to do that. There is a pull request, or at least when this um, absolute errors, there is a pull request uh that fixes that but you will need to uh, you will have to go through the steps to sign up with, with um, maxmind for free and um then you're back online yep. uh link in the show notes as, as always before. um the other one is uh, a bit older and uh relates to the fact that with uh, more 2.15, I think. Yeah. Uh, a, a really cool feature was was into, uh, introduced uh, that allowed people to restart a campaign or to be re-entered into a, a campaign. So, so before that, if one contact had been in a campaign before, it would never get back to it. Now, if, if the switch is on in the campaign, then that is possible. Except uh, it doesn't work always as expected. <laughs> and uh, again, that's uh, not, not new, but uh, it comes up in the forums again and again. And there are pull requests for that, uh, or at least uh, one pull request and uh, GitHub issue and a yep. forum task, etc. Uh, all in the show notes. So, and then one more tiny little thing that we stumbled across, and that is about the unsubscribe link in emails. Uh, you have that unsubscribe token that you have in the email template and then you can either use the system-wide settings for uh, some some content that gets displayed on the unsubscribe links mm. or you can point the unsubscribe to a certain landing page and uh, have a much more uh, individual and uh, custom in, uh, UI for the unsubscribe, resubscribe and all that yep. and that works really nice Unless you're using this in segment emails, so it's 
to me and or as multiple people oops, multiple people found <laughs> um, it only works in uh, campaign emails not in segment emails and uh, it's it, pff, you never notice uh, uh, until somebody tells you and I can only confirm that I I'm not sure there is an issue a github issue yet certainly not a fix as far as I'm concerned uh, but hopefully when the episode airs we'll have one and we'll put it at the usual places good okay let's move on uh we don't have any community stuff here because our main interview with ruth is all about community here we go so we've mentioned your name many times here on the podcast today it is my pleasure to have her here in person ruth cheesley welcome hello thank you ruth you're the community manager of the modic project and i'd like to talk to you about that a little bit and uh, also all the context of the modic community before we do that why don't you give us a little background like uh, how did you become a community manager and what did you do before that sure so i've been involved in open source for about 18 years now which is quite surprising when i look back and figure that out um, since the early days when i was at university and I mostly have been involved in the Joomla project and through volunteering in the Joomla project I ended up being part of the community leadership team for about three years and uh, D.B. Hurley who's the founder of Mortic was on the product leadership team, a uh, production leadership team at the same time. So I came to hear about Mortic quite early on and got involved with the Mortic project pretty much when it launched as a contributor, so kind of testing it, raising issues, helping with documentation um, and being active in the community. So that's probably what, maybe four or five years worth of involvement with the community. And when Acquia acquired uh, Mortic Inc, um, a few months later, there was an opportunity for a community manager to help Uh, help the community kind of um, start engaging more fully and facilitating that to happen and also being a bridge between Acquia and the community. So I started that role in August and um, before that I was doing various marketing contracts and had run a digital agency for seven years. Um, so that's sort of where my background has been in digital digital projects, web projects, marketing projects, and so forth. Okay, cool. And uh, in my, my opinion, honestly, uh, Acquia couldn't have made a better choice. I'm, I'm, I think you're, you're really, really doing a fantastic job. Uh, but for those who don't know, uh, please give us an overview first of that role, of, of the tasks of a community manager. Wow, yeah, there's a question. Um, I think it varies based on the community, but um, my, my role is primarily to um, make sure that the community is effective, and that, that can involve everything from um, getting the forums back online, so that was pretty much my first task, so that there's a place for the community to, to uh, talk to each other and support each other through to... Um, helping implement things like a governance model so based on my experience and the experience of other people in open source of how different projects have, have managed their governance sort of trying to figure out what would work for Mortic through to organizing events promoting the project at different conferences so people who don't know about Mortic come across it um, and I also work closely with D.B. Hurley who's the product lead um, on He's more focused on the technical side of the releases and what have you, but we work very closely to um, empower community to get involved wherever they can get involved in the project. Yeah, you don't consider yourself a developer, right? But I know you're a pretty technical person nonetheless, right? That's right. So I, the way I explain it is that I'm technical enough to be dangerous, and that may be doing myself some discredit, but... I definitely wouldn't consider myself as an engineer or a developer, but I um, do know enough to kind of work with Git and um, find my way around the code and what have you. 
Yeah, <laughs> confirmed. Okay, I'd like to focus a little bit on the community building part. Um, and I have to give full disclosure first, I'm also part of the community team in the Mordic project. So I have a little bit of insights there. Um, in a recent podcast here, we had uh, Rodrigo, uh, who's an active community member in, in Brazil. Um, and um, there are certain types of community places over here in, in Germany. We had multiple, well, we, are, we have multiple distinct places where people gather in Brazil. It is completely different in other countries as well. So over here, it's from Facebook all the way to monthly online user group meetings. Um, in total, it's certainly a good thing to be diverse, but uh, things seem randomly scattered at this point and also hard to find at times. So do you have any plans to support those local communities more and maybe making them more, more accessible, give better visibility, more structure, whatever? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, actually. And I think um, my experience from other communities and other projects is that the, um, the important thing is that people can find out how to uh, connect with other people nearby who have similar interests, whether that's be because they um, need some help with a problem or they want to learn more about it. But the local communities are really important. And uh, at the moment, things are a little bit fragmented. There hasn't been like a clear process for, or even clear definitions of what an official Mortic meetup is. And that's something the community team have been working on defining. We're actually working on that right at this moment. But in today's day and age, there's also the online world as well. So we're working on ways that we can make that easier for people to go to a place and find all the in-person meetups from Mortic and go to a place and find, say, all the online uh, ones as well. And I think the important thing here is that we are very clear that these groups are for the benefit of the community and they're not just a lead generating opportunity for a business. So setting some guidelines around kind of like what we expect from people who are running an official group um, will hopefully help with that because some of the groups are veering more towards um, something that's more focused for businesses rather than the community and that's not really something we want to encourage. Um, yeah, but true. Yeah. That's the same problem when I started looking around, find, find places to connect. There are groups in, in Facebook and, uh, and LinkedIn and all over the place. Uh, and some of them are dead. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are really just just fame or, or lead generation or whatever. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty hard to, to find out which are the actual uh, places to go. And, and um, yeah. Yeah. So and also, that easier is a good, good idea. Yeah. Also, because Mortic itself is a trademark term, we actually have to manage that trademark if we want to maintain it. So if people want to call themselves a Mortic meetup, that's great. But they do actually need to be working within the guidelines to be in a, to use that term. Um, so we're trying to find ways to be uh, positive and constructive and help people um, with resources, with guidance, with uh, being able to generate awareness of the group so that they get more people turning up and help with things like sharing information about speakers who might be willing to come and do a session um, at a meetup. Because running a meetup is, can be quite challenging, you know, like yeah. um, finding topics and what have you. Sorry. When you say meetup, uh, on, on the website, uh, we only see the team at Morty Camp at this point. Can, can, is, there, is this the same thing or can you explain the difference? Yeah, so what we're proposing, and this is still in the proposal phase in the community team, and anyone can get involved in the community team and have their say uh, just by turning up at one of the meetings. But what we're proposing is that um, Mortic meetups are the in-person kind of like physical meetings of other morticians in, their, in a geographical region. 
and they will be focused around like a town or a region, not a country. Uh, so it might be, in my case, Mortic meet up Ipswich or Mortic meet up Essen or Sydney or what have you. Um, That's on a regular basis, right? On a regular basis, in person and in a physical location. And we're aiming for those to be managed through a meetup.com pro account uh, so that the cost of running that will be covered by Acquia as a sponsor. And um, that will mean that we also get the reach that Meetup offers of promoting it to other people who are interested in marketing, marketing, marketing automation and so forth. But then in-person meetups would be, I think we decided to call it Mortic, Mortic Meetup in brackets online. And that could be across a multiple countries, regions. It could be people who have the same language in common. Um, so that's much more flexible. And they would mainly be promoted through the community forums as a meetup category there. So they would have a category within the forum and also be on the website under community events. And then Morty Camps, which is what um, there was some confusion in the past over that terminology. We have suggested that they be kind of like local or regional uh, conferences, smaller conferences. So maybe um, people in Central Europe might want to come together for a couple of days um, for an, un, you know, like not a Morty Con, which is going to be another thing, but something like a small regional event, and that would be a Morty Camp. So it's following a similar structure to what they do in the WordPress community in terms of their naming convention. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, tell me more about that, that Morty Con. It has been... <laughs> Uh, I think there's even a Slack group for it, but, but it's been pretty, pretty silent lately. Yeah, so that's something that we're hoping to organize this year, and we're just in the very, very, very early stages of talking about that. It would be uh, the annual conference for all things Mortic. So it would be, my vision is that it would be just as interesting for someone who is uh, a developer in Mortic as it would be for someone who's implementing or managing Mortic for someone who is interested in marketing automation. Um, and yeah, the idea is that it will be an annual conference, um, formal kind of conference with tracks and speakers and what have you. But we're at the very, very early stage. So if people are interested in helping organizing that, then they can hop on the Slack channel. And uh, I think we've been discussing that in the community team from memory. So you, you are aiming to, to do that this year, really? Wow, love it. That's cool. the aim, yes. Obviously, there's quite a lot to organize when you're planning a, a large event. So that's the kind of where we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Love it, really. Uh, so you mentioned the community team uh, already. That's, that's part of the official modic structures. Yeah. Um, or sometimes we refer to it as a, as a global community. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, 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 the structure in total and the governance model and, and all that? Yeah, absolutely. So if people want to find more about this, they can go on the mortic.org website and under the community tab, there's a link to governance. So you can kind of read the overview and also read the initial proposal and the comments that went back and forth during the consultation. That's all linked from this page. Mm -hmm. So I put it in the show notes. Sorry? I put that on the show notes. Excellent. So the structure that we have in the community is we have five teams. Uh, the teams are com the community team, which we've been talking about, the education team who look after uh, the forums, internationalization and documentation uh, currently. The legal and finance team, which is fairly self-explanatory, they look after the trademark and, and the finance. Um, the marketing team and the product team. So that is what was proposed and all kind of, we came to the decision in the community sprint last year that that was the most sensible um, uh, structure in terms of teams and um, that allows people effectively what we will have is working groups within those teams at the moment we're kind of functioning at a team level because we um, haven't really got to the point yet where we have enough people to form working groups 
So it's a great opportunity for people to to get involved. Um, and then we also have we'll have steering groups for our community and for the product, and a community council which will have four community members and four people from Acquia working together on kind of big picture issues, the decisions that need to be taken about the community. So the idea is it gives us a way for people to get involved from the local communities if they want to help with translating or they want to help with uh, doing the social media campaign and then coming up into the teams and then going up potentially going up into the council and it gives people a way to kind of contribute and see how that they can have a say in the project. Yeah, in my opinion, the fact that the more community has been reinventing itself in the, in the process of, of the acquisition like last year um, was really valuable. It was a valuable discussion with great outcome. And of course, it's still in the early stages, but, but the structure is really sustainable. And I personally, personally love this, love the, this uh, setup and uh, love to see the teams growing and, and get more things done. And I think it's only a question of time. Um, so, I, I but but as you said, the critical factor there is to get more people involved, mm -hmm. to get more people to understand what it means and how to get started, yeah. and maybe also to uh, reach out to the local communities and, and help them um, extending their their coverage and, and uh, join the the, the global community or, or co do more global contribution too. Mm. There, there are issues like the language issues uh, which, which uh, Rodrigo uh, brought up for the Brazil com community and we will see how to deal it, deal with that but, but this from local to global is, is a big thing isn't it? Yeah it is and I think so one of the ways we're trying to address this Because it's not only the language, it's also the time zone, the cultural side of things. And, you know, like it's not just language. Um, one of the ways we're trying to address this is by having the majority of our meetings on Slack asynchronously. So the agenda item will be posted and then responses can be put in a um, reply to that thread. And that means if, if you're not that confident in speaking English, you can run it through Google Translate, perhaps, to make sure that you understand, rather than have to keep pace with the conversation. Um, and it also means if the meeting's happening in a time zone that's not great for you, although we are flipping between mornings and evenings every other week to uh, help that, you can join in at a later date and still give your comments and feedback on, on the meetings and then Uh, once a month, at the end of the month, the last two meetings will be a, a video call. So we're trying to find ways that help people who um, may not may have some barriers to getting involved. Very good. So when you say morning or evening, uh, I have to add that you are currently based in the UK, right? That's right, yeah. Um, yeah, so... so What is the best way for people to get involved in order to, to do more contribution? Where to get started? Well, I mean, the first place to start would be to join the community channel on Slack. And if you're not yet on the Mortic Slack, you can go to mortic.org forward slash Slack and you can put your email address in and get an invitation because that's kind of a central place for all discussions about community. And then if you're interested in a specific team, if you go to the governance link, which is under the community uh, menu item, you can see the teams. If you click on them, you can go to the forum description that explains what that team's responsible for. And if you say you're interested in the education team, maybe you've got an experience in writing documentation or would like to help, then you can join the education team's Slack channel, which All of the teams are prefaced with T dash, so that would be T dash education. And then just hop on one of the meetings. Um, all of our work is on Trello, on a public team with public boards. So you can access that at trello.com slash Mortic community, all one word. So you can see what all of the teams are working on. So also if there's something you would like to take up, we've got a couple of blog posts, for example, that we 
need writers for, you can just hop into Slack and say, hey, I'd like to write this article, and then assign it to yourself in Trello, and, and uh, the team will support you with that. Mm. We don't yet have uh, specific people identified uh, in every team to, to act as, as a godfather or, so, <laughs> or to, to answer questions of, to, uh, f from those who are potentially interested. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but, but um, we, we have that agreement that anybody raises his hand or her hand and, and says, um, I, I am considering helping out, but I don't know what to do. Or, uh, then there will be a specific person working with you um, and, and uh, answer your questions and give, give you ideas for what, what to do first. Because, because doing an actual tangible thing rather than, than being there abstract and listening to other people conversation for me as a, in, in in my world that, that's a much better start and, and much better feeling yeah or absolutely we have asked each team to identify someone who will be work who will be effectively like the onboarding person yeah. and that will rotate every couple of weeks so it's not the same person um, at the moment it's mostly going to be me but I will be working with someone in each team to make sure that there's a process for onboarding. In the development side of things, that's slightly different because we have got people who can help with making the first commits, making the first PRs and so on and so forth. Um, but the other parts of the community is probably me or someone in the team who has said they'll be the onboarding person. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for that part. Is there anything else you want to talk about today? We're ah, good uh, question. Not, not running out of time yet, but, but uh, I think we covered a lot of ground. Yeah. Um, so I guess one thing to mention is that if you are interested in starting up a local community near you, maybe you don't know of anyone else in your local area, the best thing to do really is to go onto the forums and look at the Mortic in your country. There's an international Mortic in your country forum and just drop a post in there um, because that's a good place for people to connect with others nearby and figure out if there's interest in starting up a group. And if your country isn't there, you can just drop me a message on Slack and we can add it. Um, just in case people are wondering, like, what's the initial starting point for setting up the communities? And in terms of finding out the team meetings and things like that, they're all pasted on, they're all posted on mortic.org under community and then community events. So you can find them all there. So that's just something, a follow up point. Uh, okay. And I guess the, the big piece of news that everyone's looking forward to is the release of Mortic 3. Ooh. So that's been something that's been worked on since November, I think it is. And we did some work on that in the community summit, which kicked everything off. And I have it on good authority from Alan Hartless, who was on this podcast a little while ago, that the alpha is, they're planning to release a very early access alpha on the 10th of January, so this Friday, for a week of testing. Oh, that's uh, so when this podcast airs, it is hopefully already out. Yes. And so there'll, there'll be a week of testing. And then ideally, providing no big showstoppers come up, then the beta, which is kind of like more open access, would be 17th of January. And that will have a two weeks testing period. So assuming everything goes to plan and assuming that people test and on a testing environment, not on your live environment. We'll probably be looking at a full release in the first week of February. Obviously conditional that nothing major comes up from the alpha and beta testing. And uh, that will include instructions for migration from two to three? Yeah, that's right. So the information, my understanding at the moment is that the information is going to be provided in a uh, file within the repository, an upgrade file which is the same way Symfony deals with instructions on how to migrate. Um, so yes, information. And um, we're in the process of putting together a blog post which will explain to developers and administrators what they need to know. 
Cool. Yeah, that's good news. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that. Yeah, and then um, hopefully after that, we'll also be looking at developing a roadmap post Maltic 3 for features and dealing with the outstanding pull requests because many of those will probably need to be refactored given the changes in the code for Mautic 3. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but one step after the other and um, yeah, absolutely. all this, this, this is huge backlog of pull, pull requests and, and issues and so on it needs to be re reviewed first and, and then there's a lot of work coming up, but, but but I'm really, really looking forward to that. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, when you said drop me a line, um, how can people reach you best? Uh, you can message me on Slack. So I'm R Cheesley or on the forums as well. And my email address is, uh, we can pop that in the show notes, I guess, ruth.cheesley at mortic.org or at acquia.com. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Or social media or whatever. But those are the best ways to contact me. Yeah, it's plenty. <laughs> Okie doke. Thank you so much for today. You're welcome. Thank you. Valuable for insights. Me. And uh, I look forward to welcome more people in, in the global teams and then see everything grow. And, and uh, yeah, thanks for your work. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Bye bye. Yeah, again, thank you, Ruth. And I'm sure this is not going to be the last interview that you and I have had. Um, yeah, I want to follow up on the timeline of Mordic 3 because we're now at the coming up segment yeah and uh, as I mentioned earlier after the alpha comes the beta and uh, eventually the release um, the M3 team is really optimistic about this now mm -hmm. it hasn't been before but now they are <laughs> um, and they say if all goes well, best case, uh, it's going to be just one week before they are going to release the beta and uh, then another two or three weeks if all goes well. <laughs> oh, we have to see. Um, we'll see the Mordic 3 release entering the light of the day. Um, what would you do with those stages, alpha, beta and release? Alpha, by definition, is really early early stage and that it's good to, to play around with and to to uh, QA it and to understand the changes if any yeah. um, but it's not for anything else and not even for trying to migrate from from Mordic 2 to Mordic 3 with with the beta that should be there so it, the the migration or the, the mechanisms should be there the instructions should be there so that is the right point to give it a try and in your own test environment update or upgrade from Mordic 2 to Mordic 3, 3 and give the team a lot of feedback. If something fails, uh, give the proper feedback and help them um, get the glitches out. And um, yeah, if if you are really under time pressure, then then Mordic the Mordic release is the, the version to go with, but normally you would never go live with, with the release version of Mordic 3.0, no. uh, but wait for the first couple of bug, bug fixes. Which like, will come. Yeah, actually, that yeah. one, that two or so. Um, yeah, other than that, there's no real pressure to upgrade quickly. You're in no worse shape than you were a month ago. Um, so I personally... Uh, or, or in our agency, we have the strategy to, work, to wait at least one or two months before we upgrade the first system and then do the other one step by step. Okay, so coming up, there are other things, of course. Mm. Um, all the events are, like we now learned, underneath <laughs> mordic.org slash events. Uh, it is currently stuffed with Mordic team meetings. Oh yeah! But there is a a tip. There's a checkbox at the top uh, that allows you to filter all those recurring events mm -hmm. and to see them only once, and, and then it's less cluttered. Yeah. Yeah. Other events uh, are coming in event uh, eventually. Um, yeah, slowly, yeah. but but Soon slowly. <laughs> um, you see the first ones. If you have any sort of event, it's really simple. Uh, just give re uh, give Ruth a a center line. Uh, very basic information and as you put it in the list yep. for team meetings there's another tip I can give you 
uh, this, that is a Google Calendar uh, where all the team meetings are online and visible and you can not only, not only look them up there, but you can also subscribe to that calendar and then very conveniently you have all the team meetings in your own uh, in your own calendar and uh, use them as you like. Yeah, pretty handy. It is, it is. For those who uh, are team members or are interested in listening in or, or finding out, etc. Yeah. yeah, that's it for today, I guess. Yeah. We're Thanks packing up our snowboard gear. Yeah. When and <laughs> the beverages and everything that belongs. Um, and we'll talk to you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.